Yeah, Candy sounded like, bitch, I'm late to this event. I had to deal with my kids. We about to play the video. We about to play the video, but Candy is like 90s media trained. So for her to even mm. go to that place, I think she <laughs> meant that shit. Like, it is what it is. But let's get into it. Uh, take the overlay off. I'm, I'm going to say Yeah, rewind it. Y'all hear Yeah. He even said that you need to stop talking about sex. So how do you feel hearing that tonight? She kept the key. Um... And that's why she be so fake to me. Uh, was it was a day or last night she was sending us the invites, her thing. She wanted us to come support her and her business or whatever. And I was the first one on the group text, probably the only one, no, one of two of all the housewives who said, oh, yeah, girl, I'm going to come be there for you. She gets on my motherfucking nerves. I'm tired of her bullshit. She's fake as fuck. If y'all do not know, I have been doing way more for the community than all of them. I don't mind saying it. Okay, I don't always do everything I do on television, but if you want to go to television receipts, speaking of culture, we just even the food drives that I did in the past. Who was the main one trying to show up to help her? And she want to act like she don't remember. Listen, I buy I pay off college tuition, so I don't even know. Candy Bird is giving back to the culture. A what? I put all my businesses in black communities so that I can bring more jobs to our community. What's she doing? Uh, and, what is and to be clear, of all people that I've helped, she should know. Because when she wasn't on this show and couldn't get on this show for years, who helped her get another show Ooh. on the network? But she wanted to kiss ass and be a friend of the show again on this show, so she let that opportunity drop. But it's facts. I got her showing a whole nother network when she needed help. And she want to get over here and show her motherfucking ass. She's getting on my nerves. Like, I literally, when I tell you, literally just was like, oh, yeah, girl. Even the food drives that I did. And if Candy would just focus on, now say if we went there and she was like, hey, I'm going to teach you guys all how to uh, contribute to a play and become a producer, how to get a restaurant, do some shit for the black culture. We got enough babies and diseases out here. We don't need no shit else about sex, Candy. You didn't fuck. You fucked out in Atlanta, okay? And I'd have had plenty too, like you say. But girl, and if Candy would just focus on, now say if we went there and she was like, "Hey, I'm gonna teach you guys all how to." Uh, okay, we get the dress. <laughs> Excuse me. Marlo working overtime for her fucking peach. That's yes, what it is. is. She's working overtime for her peach. Now, she in real is. life, I, I don't F with it. But on the show, I do think Candy could work harder for a check because for the past, let me say, four seasons, maybe, I feel like it's been an infomercial for Candy. When was Mama Joyce bullshit ended? Because I feel like it's been four since Todd's mom died. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's been longer, I think. Since Todd's mom, maybe four. Or more. Okay. It's been a I'm long trying, time, I feel like. Because I feel like that's when Mama Joy stopped fucking with Ty. But people still had shit to say about I mean, I just kind of feel like at the end of the day, I think Candy has facilitated. Because ultimately, Candy brought Bolo last season. So it's not like mm. she hasn't earned her check. It's just that it hasn't been from her own personal life in a minute. And honestly... It's the smartest thing she could. I mean, come on, be, be keep it a buck. If I didn't already spray my shit, I got my little cute little bitty husband. Y'all already talk bad about him. We got our spinoff shows. I've already done all the work. Like, be like, come on, y'all. Think about it. Candy been on here since season two. Candy done a lot of work on the show. I think she just kind of got lazy <clears throat> as yeah. far as what she was doing on the show. But everybody did. It wasn't just her. It was everybody. It's and the I, seniority. The yeah. girls do our work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I feel like now it's it they probably got new producers. They said they were they're now in a different I mean, the way she just cursed her out let us know that they're in a different space than they were before. But I think in real life, when you are happy in your real life, it's harder to give shit on a reality show that's entertaining to people. Very you know good what I'm saying? Point. Or else but you end up looking like Drew. Hello. And we I don't want that. <laughs> I think Nobody Candy was that. most upset because Marlo questioned her, what she doing in the community. I feel like mm -hmm. that's a whole different dig at her. So I think 
you know, Phaedra Shade was like, bitch, you ain't even on TV. So, like, you were the friend of a show that wouldn't even watch. So, like, I, you don't even matter. But with Marlo, like, we both on the same show, and you're attacking me for something that you know for a fact I do daily. I think that's why she was so pissed. And it is, like, when someone you cool with say some foul shit, it pitches you off because you like we you know what I do, bitch. That's on bullshit. I seen someone bring up how oh if Candy can forget Portia, she gets she get past this with Marlo. I think it's two different things. I think Portia was being done for somebody else, but Marlo is intentionally trying to make it seem as if Candy ain't doing enough. And she are, and again, once she get by being fucked out, Candy gonna be pissed because y'all were cool and Marlo on bullshit just to get on next season. And let's not forget that rumor about Candy from season nine. Allegedly came Carlos. So him kind of laughing and giggling now. It's like, does Carlos not like Andy? Who is this girl in the picture on the right? That's, that's the girl, girl that Carlos interviewed her. Yeah, that's yes, that's D. She did the interview. Oh, okay. I thought that was Bernice. But it was it was mm-hmm. exclusive. No, she do. But that was exclusive to the neighborhood talk. So I couldn't get them off of it. <laughs> I, I wish they would have played was. it unedited. I feel like they cut they cut it up. I wish we could have heard like fully what she said, but you know. Right. Yeah. Because it seemed like she was going off for a minute. You it, did. It, it, it and you, did. you know she had to stop herself. That's why yeah. she ended it when she gets on my MF for nerves because that's when the shaking start getting more intense. No, she kept she kept talking and it cuts off. So I feel like they, they put, that may have been the most vo- not vulgar, but the most cussing she did but she was talking a little bit more and then it cuts off. So I'm, I wish they would have played the whole thing to what she said. Mm. Well, that's some um, miss she gonna that we may or may I not see because my love might not be back. She gonna. I hope she talk about it on her speak on it. Um, after this upcoming episode, hmm. or her Amazon live. If somebody asked, she probably would. Absolutely. I know somebody asked her before about um. Well, Candy, you can come over here and talk about it with us. You show Candy come have speak a whole on it. seat on uh, Ooh Ladies night. First Panel. That's the name of the video. Speak on it on uh, Ooh Ladies First Panel. Um, be I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking Candy on, on this on this occasion. As Marlo far as fuck. Phaedra, I know we're not talking about Dubai, but I can't I can't deal with Phaedra. Oh. I can't deal with Phaedra in the the face anymore, y'all. I can't deal with it. What's wrong with the face? <laughs> what's wrong with the face? I haven't noticed what's wrong with the face, girl. Oh, she looked different in the face. What, I what just, did I miss? Let me I go back and look. Let me talk about Phaedra. I Phaedra said I know we're not talking about Dubai, but number one, I can't do Phaedra in her face, so she shouldn't have came on talking about she going to be in Dubai on a yacht. And number two, I don't want to see her on Dubai because she's going to be acting fake. Phaedra is one of them like grade A code switchers. And mm-hmm. I don't mean like everybody don't code switch a little bit, but no, Phaedra to another level. completely changes who she is. And let's be real, you ain't got money like the girls in Dubai got money. So for you to be acting like you're doing something because you're going to be on Dubai, girl... She said Nobody she got else knows face. Am I tripping? I she know, got a C Moss line. She I said she got a C Moss line. Let me know. She, 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 yeah, yeah, she said she got a tech company and she do C Moss or something. This is crazy. Know how to make a check. If there's if anything at, crazy you know how to do is make a check, but I don't trust it as far as I can throw it. And with her thick size, I can't nah, throw it at it's far. Jamie, look at Phaedra. Look at Phaedra no photo from season time. one of Literally. Housewives and look at her now. Her face do look different. It like, does look different. similar. Hold up, y'all. I'm pulling But it all up. of their faces look different. Yeah. But hers look different Most of them. Way. I ain't gonna say all. Most of them. Hold up, y'all. Let me move it. Hold hers up. don't look different in a good way to me. Okay, well, this ain't no. That she don't regular. usually look like this. <laughs> yeah, no, especially from video. Like I seen a TikTok video she posted, and she was looking completely different. Yeah, no, she looked regular in all of these. And I, I'm telling because you, I have her been... angles. No, but I have been seeing her look different, like lighter, different yeah. type of facial features. And it's not what I'm seeing on her Instagram. That is hella weird. On mm. uh, Instagram, she looks like herself. But it, it's I saw a TikTok video of hers, and she looked co- wildly different. Child, let me go see. You know why? Because she be putting them she fucking filters that? on her face. Yeah, the, the oh. housewives definitely be overdoing their filters. That but I wonder like if that. maybe she got a new set of teeth or something. I don't know. I could yeah. be. But I'm wondering. Uh-huh. 
maybe she could have got i don't know i'm just wondering if she could have possibly got some veneers Kinda that like look normal you know what i'm saying look like her teeth versus how some people get them and she looks different in the way we're like you know all the basketball wives when they came back they looked the same but they looked like they had fillers <laughs> and they got kind of bloated too mm -hmm. that's what it looks like bloated. yeah because some people it's a I blind feel hair like, too it is and the wigs don't look good some people when they get surgery like they look good when they first get it but afterwards when they go back to their regular lifestyle they end up looking bloated with the surgery then it looks like you stuck inside your own body and i feel like that's what phaedra is starting to look like because her it's face is up. snatched it's just i can't i i gotta find a tiktok video let me yeah i think it. she could have got her teeth done possibly if you find it share it and i will i'll pull it up if you find it okay but um let me, let me let's, let's, let's let's go ahead and get into real housewives of atlanta so i'm gonna just tell you i'm gonna start off here so y'all know last episode kenya got in uh in, in in Ralph's ass because she was deflecting. That's how people felt. She was not deflecting, projecting her issues with Mark onto Ralph. And then this episode, she proceeds to apologize to him about it. I personally felt like, no, you are 100% right about him. There was no need to apologize. You called the thing a thing in the moment and we were grateful for it. I kind of was upset that she went back and apologized, but I do feel like Kenya is one of those women that as much as she is smart and understands that men play games and, and act like they're stupid, she also doesn't want to be disliked. Like in that moment when she told him about himself and realized how it had came off and then switched it off on Drew. But you know, Drew, it is about you too, though, Drew. You know, to me, that all felt like I don't want to be disliked by the men. So let me hurry up and switch it up now that I've held them too accountable. Um, but she was right to me about Ralph and I don't think she needed to apologize. What do y'all think? I think she knew she was right. I think her, her apology was more if he felt disrespected in her delivery, but I think she wasn't saying sorry for what she said, but probably how it came off to him. And that could have been because, you know, as somebody else's husband, you don't want to offend somebody. So I don't think she was sorry for what she said at all. I think her whole, her main thing was you triggered me to what I was going through. I meant what I said, but how it came off, I'm sorry for that. I don't mind anyone acknowledging that they may not have meant to be so harsh, for lack of a better term, and what they said. But I don't think at all she, you know, was saying I ain't me. She said what she said, and it was all true. But I didn't mind her saying, you know, all right, I ain't mean to go that hard on your monkey ass and saying fuck you. <laughs> but I'm like, that be. Yeah, I think that's probably what it was, because for me, I was thinking she was more so just apologizing for projecting, you know, um, because he triggered her. But that was it. I mean, I ain't really seen nothing wrong with her, you know, apologizing and just moving on. Yeah, I thought that was growth for Kenya to apologize for projecting. Mm, that's true. Um, but what I thought was very telling was whenever she did apologize, Ralph said, that's all right. Sometimes I'm just misunderstood. And he took no account accountability. <laughs> and that's for what he why actually she did. shouldn't have apologized. <laughs> yikes. I have, yikes. No I have no patience. I'm sorry. I'm at a point in my life where I have no patience because I feel like my daddy told me years ago that you niggas would, would know what y'all was doing. And now that I'm at 34, I feel like y'all know exactly what the fuck y'all be doing. So, no, I'm not cutting you niggas no slack. Go to bed. Mm -hmm. Well, there's that. Well, luckily, you know, he married to Drew. And Drew don't like it. So, Kenya got to deal with it. But Kenya got Mark. So, do it go. You feel the little bullshit. I know. But I want Mark. I mean, I want Kenya to do a little bit better. Because I feel like Kenya learned something from her relationship with Mark. But I feel like there's still a part of her that wants to hold on to this black male worship shit. You know, for lack of a better term right now. But when she was talking about how she still wanted to force... You know, this situation between Mark and her daughter, I was like, girl, if he's a toxic person for you, do you really think he's going to be a healthy father for your daughter? Or is he going to make her insecure as a woman as she grows old, realizing that he can't be 100 percent what she needs? Yeah, I think she's not seeing it 100 percent. Clearly, this is her first child. I think 
over time she's gonna it's gonna click for her but i really mm -hmm. think she may be coming from a space of not having her mom and yeah. really doesn't want her daughter to feel that absence so it's like if i have to remind you or make sure i bring her over here or kind of like force you to be a dad you know she's not seeing how it's really harming her daughter she's just more so i'm thinking seeing it as he's present in her life i want her to have both parents because i never did and i think she right she may feel like no one ever tried to force her mom to be a mother to her so she gonna force Mark yeah. to be a father to her daughter because she didn't get that and i think the fact that even as an adult how she still feel like no one you know made her do whatever um i think she still holds on to that i think like i'm like jamie said in a couple of years that's gonna die off a little bit but i do think right now she still in her head feel like she's young enough to where these years will matter to her in the future so if i can just you know make him be around hopefully he'll either just start doing himself but at least i can say when she's older i tried i think her life no, i think her life she's feel like nobody tried so she's trying to make sure her daughter doesn't have the same scars she has based on what she went through and i think that's a good thing but also you have to know when to stop doing that yeah, so they don't end up being different scars though um just because i think she's gonna ultimately end up teaching her that her daddy I don't know. I think she's going to end up teaching her that you can force somebody to learn how to love you or force somebody to want to have you around. Um, and Brooklyn is going to realize it eventually. So That's my hope in a couple of years she'll kind of... Because Brooklyn's like, what, two or three? She's like, I hope, I hope by the time she's like five or maybe even six, you know, she'll know, okay, I can't keep pressing him to do shit because it's not healthy for me or for her. But, I, you know, I do give new moms credit because, you know, there is no, you know, manual to that shit. And I think everyone can only do the best they can. And I think for Kenya, the best she the best she knows is to try to not have her daughter live the life she let, that she lived. And But it, it'll take time for her to realize how she can still do that but not be forcing Mark to do shit that he don't want to do because, you know what I'm saying, well, fuck Mark. And that's on him to have to deal, live with as he gets older, that he wasn't around for, for Brooklyn. I want to say this. At the end of the day, a father is only valuable when he makes an effort. He's only valuable when he wants to genuinely make the effort. When I look back on it, I know my dad made a conscious effort in every way possible to give me as much as he could so that I could have a good life. Like, I know that. I not only heard him say it, but I watched him in, in the way he acted, the way he showed up. So to me, when we allow men to look like they're not that bad when they're not showing up, we're doing ourselves and our children a disservice. If he's not showing up on his own fruition, on his own free will, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And I just want her to learn that sooner than later because her willingness to force it will end up hurting Brooklyn because Brooklyn will then be expecting him to show up because Kenya wants him to show up and mm -hmm. he still won't. Just like he called you to come and get the baby even though he was barely with the baby for a few hours. And hadn't seen her for three months and would have continued to go on not seeing her because I think before this before this episode there was a time where she mentioned he hadn't seen her in five months because of the pandemic. So I mean, Kenya, he didn't even want to be in the household with you when y'all were married, and the reason was the pandemic. To me, a lot of women like to ignore the fact that the way a man treats you is very similar to the way he will treat his efforts with his child. They act like it's not, but to me, with Mark, it is very similar. He never showed much effort in being with Kenya. And now, as a father, to me, based on what we've seen and what she said, he has not shown much effort to be a father to Brooklyn. So I, I just want her to pay attention that the way he treated you it is very much similar to the way he's going to treat Brooklyn. It's not you, Kenya. It's him. And, and when you understand it's him, then you understand that there's really nothing that you can do except for make it easy for him. But you can't force him to be what you need he know him to be for Brooklyn. And it's just, it's sad to me. But yeah, y'all, um, outside of that, um, so 
Candy wanted to vibrate other people's panties. Um, I feel like <laughs> Candy's a swinger. She and Todd are swingers. Um, and it's something that they do. And I feel like Sonya and Ross may be down. Yeah. Maybe even Drew and Ralph, because if Ralph is down, then Drew is down. That's how that goes. <laughs> um, and you know what, Candy? Bad girl, Candy. Bad girl. You know your uptight friends aren't down for that shit. So you should have just secretly given it to the women who were coming with their husbands, let them know what was up, and then left Kenya, Sheree, and Marlo out of it because they didn't come with niggas. Like, it was just, to me, it was very simple. Um... But also, you guys, like, I'm not going to lie. It was great advertisement. I absolutely went on her website after to see what her vibrating panties were hitting for. And honestly, I saw some that were a little bit more congruent with the grooves of a vagina. So we'll talk about that later when I get uh -huh. it in the mail. Um, because I'm going to be doing an you know, affiliate program for a sex toy company. So y'all know I'm going to bring that to y'all. Um... So, yeah, but Candy, work on your vibrating panties because I feel like there's a better way to do that, you nasty little bitch. Um, Marlo, you were a prostitute. Stop. Kenya, you busted wide open last season when y'all had the little stripper situation. So I want everybody to kind of, you know, chill out on the uptightness on Real Housewives of Atlanta. But outside of that, yeah, Candy, nasty bitch. I don't think they're being uptight. Um... I agree. I would not want nobody's husband buzzing my panties unless I was trying to fuck. <laughs> unless the entire group was trying to hook up. Um, that would just be weird for me unless y'all was on the same page. But I do think that Candy and Ty are swingers. I think they was trying to test the vibes and see who was really down. And that was part of it. Um, so, yeah. Um... Yeah, I didn't like that either when it came to the uh, busting of somebody's uh, coochie twa by somebody's husband. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I was with the ladies. I was with Kenya and not putting it on. I mean, Kenya done already got uh, scrutinized and called out when she was jumping in the water with Apollo. I'm sure she don't right. want to go back down that road to somebody being upset that they man didn't bust her coochie twa. So I, I mean, if they allowed it, it, that ain't the same thing. But, you know, I get it. <laughs> yeah. If they allowed it, that ain't the same like, thing. I, I did want to go by her vibrating panties, but not for somebody really? else's husband to be buzzing my panties. Ooh, I don't think that was the overall vibe. I really do think it was more so as an advertisement and it and it had to be like on the night. You know, Candy's a, a thinker. So on, on the night of the play, I know they're going to film that night. They might not film any other time, but I know the night of the play they're going to film. So I'm going to make sure on the night that we go to the play that I'm going to have them wear them because then I know they're going to film that. So that's going to be like, I'm, I know she's thinking in that standpoint. I don't blame Candy than, for that. It's Ralph. <laughs> I don't oh, like Candy oh, for that. Yeah. Oh, you, um, think he, you think he did it on purpose? He was looking at uh, Drew. No, he knew because she mentioned, she said, who's doing that? She said that more than once. And then she said, Todd, is that you? And he was still buzzing. And then she said, Ralph. So he continued to do it. Like, I think at first he didn't realize that he was buzzing her panties. But after a while, he absolutely did and kept doing it. It was weird. <laughs> I think Yikes. Um, I think he he was, but I definitely saw him looking at Drew at first. So I felt like it wasn't, I think he thought he was trying to get hers to work. I don't think he realized that he was doing Sonya's at first until she leaned over to him. And then I felt like you nasty some of them. Then he kept doing it. Yeah. I don't like Ralph. So there's that. Um, but you know, my whole thing with everybody was that I feel like Candy wasn't making it like a. A, you know, a mandatory thing. He could have not worn the panties, and I, I feel like it would have been fine. Um, so for me, it's uptight if somebody's giving you a choice. You don't have to do it, you know? But, you know, hey, to each his own. Um, I'm at a different freak level, so I guess, you know, I mean, I don't want anybody else buzzing my sh nobody else's husband buzzing my shit, but I probably would have done it in a group setting like that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's no. I feel like that's normal though. <laughs> you said you okay. had a different freak level, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, 
the, yeah, I don't want Ralph to bust my shit. No, that's absolutely. what. I, that's the part that's weird. Like I would absolutely wear vibrating panties out and about on a date with my husband, but for somebody else's husband to okay after he already knew. But that what if was it was somebody exactly? Attractive? What if it was something like okay? So for instance, on sisters. What if it was KJ and the, and then that nigga that y'all was on the date? If I was a if I was a swinger, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I ain't judging nobody for that. If you a swinger. Okay. Yeah. I feel let's like not create problems that don't have to be there. You know. You know? I, I agree. I agree. I just still I feel like everybody was like, oh my god, and I'm like, I don't know. I guess because I have seen so many of those fucking Instagram commercials, it just right. to me it just was like, oh, she's just doing that because they keep doing them Instagram commercials every other fucking. I've day. been telling y'all we need to get a, a code because I used to listen to podcasts all the time and they always okay. had fifty percent off Adam and Eve. But if Candy could come over here and give us the discount code for our viewers. And for us, well, listen, if on. Candy won't fuck with us, let us know because somebody else is fucking with me and I could absolutely, you know, run that y'all way. Come because, on. yeah, no, I'm waiting on some shit in the mail. And as soon as I get it and I figure it, you know, like, and I can tell y'all what it was about. Um, but I'm going to send y'all the link to the website anyway because her website is super cute and dope. Because I was actually on her website and Adam and Eve's website and Candy's website. website. So outdated. Exactly. Adam and Eve. I'm, I'm about to send y'all the, the website to the one that I'm talking about. Y'all gonna like that one if you feel like that, because that's how I felt about Adam and Eve, too. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, I can't wait to become an affiliate and get 15% off from y'all getting sex toys, because some of y'all need to learn how to masturbate. You're going too much I comments. Um, so let's go ahead. Sheree and Tyrone. It wasn't going to happen. I don't think it was <laughs> going to happen. It was all for play play. Do I feel bad? No, bitch. You too old for these types of games. Get you an old nasty man with money and go sit your dumb ass down somewhere. Go ahead. I felt bad that they talked that morning and he had her thinking that he was going to show up only for her to get there and wait the same amount of time that it took her to get there <laughs> waiting on him and feeling dumb. And it was the fact that she couldn't even tell whether she was blocked or not. I'm like, Sheree, you knew you was blocked. You knew he restricted your number, girl. You just wanted to ask your daughter like, oh, my God. But what I did like out of that was her being able to call Kenya and Kenya, you know, being there for her in the moment and trying to make her feel a little better. You know, but um, I hope that they're not talking anymore. And it's sad that y'all went this long of you, him always being in steady contact with you. And then now when he has the opportunity to see you face to face outside of prison, he don't show up. Like, that's whack. That's whack. Yeah, it hurt my heart. I had secondhand embarrassment. Just to see an older woman uh, look so naive, too, with that. It was sad. It was sad. It really was. Um, yeah, I knew she wasn't going to see him whenever he said he couldn't make it because 94.6 miles is too close to 100 miles after she was already so close to you. So, mm, tragic. Sheree and uh, Tyrone Planet, I don't think for one second that y'all have been talking all that time and then all of a sudden, the day y'all going to meet up, he not answering. He ain't calling you back. I was like, you plan. I don't think. I think Sheree and Tyrone knew they were not gonna be together. I think they both. That's why he wanted a check for coming on the show. If I can get no check, I'm not gonna fake this with you. So I'll act like I'm coming, and then that's your storyline, and then we're gonna be done. But I felt like it was sad, yes. But I'm like, common sense. Sheree's a grown ass woman. In her <laughs> common know, sense. Say it again. <laughs> it's, it's common sense. It's like the phone. You you talk to him all the time, Facetime or whatever. The one time he stopped calling is because he can't come. And then his attorney called the producers. It was made up, in my opinion. I think it was it's for our storyline. Because what else does she have? Because he can't come to Atlanta and she can't keep going flying to, to Philly to see him. I'm like, this is her way of making our storyline. I am so hurt. The, the kind that I believed in left me destitute. Now that's my thing for the rest of the season. She ain't fooling me. Right. And that was her ticket for the check. So she might not be back another season unless she bring it in another way. Because her, her contract said We'll have you come back if Tyrone is on the show. Now, I don't know because I didn't read the contract, but I'm just saying, I, I assume that was part of the negotiation to come back on the show. Are you muted, Jamie? I just said, well, that's interesting. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I bet she was telling that because outside of that, what else was she going to give? Jogger right. 
because I was like the fact that she, I think that when she said how they had saw each other maybe twice before and they always meet up at restaurants or whatever. So why would he not come now? And he, he, he you were Thank driving you, to him. He wasn't close to you. He, you, you were driving two hours to him. So I'm like, it had to be a plan. And I think she knew again, it'd be good for the show. I'm cold. I'm in my boots. I got all the hair. I'm giving me a cold drink. I'm gonna sit with Sheree would not sit for two hours for someone who ain't calling her back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I think it's be because her wig is pulled. Too she cold. waited on her house to be built that long. She could. She was gonna <laughs> wait on him too. <laughs> I think with Phaedra, it's the makeup, the wig, and she is absolutely fillers and something done with her jawline. She probably got like some Kai Bella. You know, the girls get the Kybella, the injections down here, so it look like you don't have a jawline where she used mm. to have one. No, mm-hmm. Nisi, tell us some shit we don't know. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to say Kybella. I'm going to say that. some, okay. some Juvederm in the cheeks. <laughs> okay, good to know. Nah, and it's, um, it's mostly makeup and mostly makeup in the wig, but I definitely can tell it's some non, non-invasive surgery. This got her looking different. They're like cousins. It look unnecessary. Mm. Hold up. Let's go to the TikTok. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me share the TikTok. Hold up. Because the girls will get Cabela injections and they job will go from. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not even playing. Okay. It's not playing? Oh, it's playing now. It's a delay. It's a little delay. Girl. And it's to me, it's also something about the way that I might be tripping, but it's something about the way that her upper lip is Mm -hmm. held now. That's it's like a permanent pout that Mm. upper lip. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. before that, it wasn't like that. That's the only thing I do see. Is that is is her lips. And also it could be a pout because I think that she also got her some veneers. Girl, it's it's a lot to me. It's the blind hair. You know what it's giving? It's giving Goldie Hawn. Like, bitch, it's giving elderly nineties white lady. That's what it's giving. It's sad, sad Mm -hmm. for me and all my homegirls. Is there anything (laughs) else we want to discuss for Real Housewives of Atlanta? We didn't talk about Sonya doing the wrong. That's the main thing. Forgot about her fake ass. Yeah, Sonya. Girl, that that was was fake as fuck. That was fake as fuck. Okay, so let me tell you, Sonya. So let me tell y'all. So Sonya decided she... I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. You froze, buddy. Well, Sonya... Basically, Sonya was on bullshit, basically. You know, Sonya talking to Drew. I th- so Sonya talking to Drew in front of the other women, to me, was on bullshit. I think when Drew said, we were just together upstairs. I, I think if you have a real issue, that's fine. My mm-hmm. issue was you didn't wait. You didn't bring it up until they was all around. But I'm like, how right. are you upset with Drew for a situation between her and Sheree? When technically her and Sheree not even really friends like that. This they first season film together. So I don't get how Sonya made it like a big issue. Like, oh, because you put your hands in her face. So what? And, and if that's the case, to do with her. Right. But tell me right. that separately. Like, why would you come in acting like, okay, this is an issue that we all have. So we all discuss. Like, no, Drew, Drew in my opinion, Drew was really like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because What's the issue? It, it shouldn't have been an issue, in my opinion. Nah, Sonya was definitely a uh, bogus for that. It was given either she was told by the producers to bring it up or that she was rushing to bring it to Drew before anybody else does. And mm. I'm willing to give her this excuse as we, you know, continue to see how she operates. She could be one of those people that, you know, how you have a friend where they may do some stuff as you're getting to know them, but it goes unchecked. And then after a while, you know, y'all, all the things that they've done, you've accumulated. And then now it's this big blow up. She could be a person where it's like, okay, let me go ahead and chomp you out right here. It's coming off a bit weird to us because we don't really know her like that. So if we see her do this again later in the season with somebody else, then this would make then that, you know, excuse would make sense. But I think that, you know, it could be she was she just had a conversation with Kenya. So it's like, let me hurry up and tell you since Kenya opened up the floor. Let me tell you before Kenya be the person to sit up here and tell you. It's this comment from Empress Carter for me um, where it says, came across to me as if Sonya wanted to publicly distance herself from Drew. That's exactly Mm. what it was. 
that's exactly what it was. I think that she saw the way that the ladies treated Drew at the dinner table by telling her that, you know, y'all never like to apologize. You like to gaslight as well. You argue wrong, okay? I think she saw the way that the ladies didn't really vibe with her, and she knew that if it was ever a time for Drew to get iced out, I don't want y'all to think that I'm going to ride with her to the wheels fall off. So if it's ever come a point to where y'all don't F with her, I want y'all to know that Mm -hmm. I, I'm not over there with that because she still wants to be accepted by the majority of the group. And that's whack. She was trying to play strategic. And that's the one thing I hate on all the Housewives shows is whenever they play strategically. Because even though some of those things are true with Drew, she never did that to you. But that was her trying to make sure that she was on the right team for whenever they do get tired. Mm -hmm. But so even her going on um, when Sonya was on, you know, speak on it. And her saying, well, you know, we're not really friends. You know, I'm not really friends with you. I was like, but what, if that's the case, then why do you care about what she's doing? If y'all are not really friends, how she moves should matter to you. Because y'all ain't cool anyway. I feel like on the show, your issue was, we, we friends, and I don't like how you're doing, so I should be able to come to you and say these things. However, on Candy Speak One, you was like, oh, we're not really, we're friendly. You know what I'm saying? I've met her a couple of times. Um, it, 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 it was it was backpedaling, pussy popping, and just lying, in my opinion. And she's made it a point with both. I feel like she's trying to get in with the cool girls because I've seen Sonya at this point make it... Um, she's made it a point with both Candy and Kenya that she really don't fool with Drew. Number one, she made it a point with Candy when you brought it up in the kitchen that um, Ralph was messing around with the assistant. You told Candy some stuff that Drew told you one on one, which was probably gonna come out regardless because of the TV show. But you made a point to bring it up because you knew the shit sounded like some clownery, and you wanted to let Candy know, like, listen to this wild shit that she told me, right? Mm -hmm. So number one, number two, you made it a point to go on the walk with Kenya to let Kenya know this is how I feel. So I think she's definitely trying to get in where she fit in. Um, and she did that with the dinner table when she chimed in with what Kenya. And the other ladies were saying about Drew, she's definitely trying to become gang, gang, gang. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it, you know, I, I feel like it was giving fake. Um, and, and I say fake because I feel like I definitely think you used her to get on the show. You didn't need her to get on the show, but you used her to get on the show. And I want to be clear on that. You didn't need her, but you still used her. And essentially, I feel like the way you tried to play her out as if the issue she had with the other ladies was your issue with her, that's what I didn't like. Because to me, that didn't have shit to do with you. Nothing that happened had anything to do with you. And it was nothing that Drew had done to you personally. So for me, that was the main reason why you didn't need to really speak or feel a way about any of that. If Drew wants to have a messy ass assistant, what the fuck does that have to do with you? Like maybe that's her passive aggressive way of getting back at her dirty ass husband by keeping an assistant around that would tell other people he fucking other men because y'all know how people feel about that. Mm. Maybe that's her passive aggressive. <laughs> I'm just saying, I thought about it when she didn't tell him and you gave me I have a different reason for why she didn't tell him. I mean, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I'm sure I'm wrong about that. I'm just throwing it out there because I feel like essentially like who fuck that has nothing to do with you, Sonya. Like at the end of the day, that has nothing to do with you. And then you didn't like that she put her hands in Sheree's face. Okay, cool. I got you on that. But again, did not happen to you. So for you to take the first trip as the opportunity to distance yourself from Drew over some shit that didn't have nothing to do with you, it seemed like you was thirsty to let the other girls know that thirsty. you were more so on their side. And that's mm -hmm. why I don't get no respect. Because you could have just played it in a cut and chilled on the shit and the opportunity would have eventually presented itself because Drew is annoying as fuck. So at some point, she would have done something in a setting that would have made it more realistic for you to have an issue with her instead of you trying to find one so you can distance yourself as soon as possible, which is, you know, how I felt. So there's mm -hmm. that. So anybody want to add anything else to Real Housewives of Atlanta or can we just go ahead and move on to gossip chat? Because that's what I would like to do. It's a gossip. Let's get to the gossip. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> All 
All right, y'all. So your girl Carisha has a show on Revolt TV. It's a podcast, okay, given to her by the old boy Puff Daddy, okay? And I watched the episode today, and it was funny, and it was cute. I already really like Carisha because I, I just, you know, the Miami girls are the girls after my own heart as a New Orleans girl, okay? Um, and I think Carisha's glow up has been impeccable. She looks incredible. Um, I love the City Girls music for what it does for the thoughts, you know, what it does for my workout regimen. You know, it's just great. So here are a few tidbits from Carisha, please. The first episode with her little boyfriend or whatever, Puff Daddy, okay? Um, they both enjoy acting up. He a bad boy. You know what I'm saying? She a city girl. Um, they also both lost their co-parent recently so they both like went through a hard time him dealing with Kim Porter and her dealing with the de her baby daddy or whatever so they both had to like deal with that and that I felt like wow that gave some depth to the situation for me that I didn't think was there initially I was like oh wow I didn't even you know really think about the fact that both of them had you know recently lost a person more so because i felt like you know diddy don't give a fuck about women essentially i think he uses them for however long he wants to use them and then he discards them so to me it never felt like there would be any real emotion but i'm sure there there was that's still a mother of your children and for Carisha, I feel like it's, it makes me feel sad because it makes me feel like he may have used that in order to you know invoke some emotion from her and I know the city girls act like they bad bitches and they can't be hurt by men, but that's a lie. So, you know, I'm just nervous a little bit for however this toxic ass dynamic is going to work out because they both admit that they're toxic. He admits that, you know, he can be toxic in his relationships. And she admits that she can, you know, break the windows out your car and be standing outside your mama house with a bat. Like, come outside. Why are you not answering a phone? Okay. Um, he mentioned that. You know, she asked him, you like the fuck or you like to make love? And he was like, make love. You know, I like the marathon, you know, love. And she was like, you know, they talked about the song. Y'all know that song where she was like, you know, uh, Diddy with all them roaches on his face, put his ass to sleep when his no shares or whatever the fuck the line is. But apparently roaches all over Diddy's face was a, a traumatic experience for him as a child or some shit. And he was actually quite upset that she had brought that up on the song. Um, but at the same time, you know, he was like, you ain't never put me to sleep when you didn't see me go to sleep. You ain't never made, you know, see me go to sleep. And I was like, ew, Carisha, you're having like nasty, you know, old man sex with Diddy. Ew. And he's staying up all night after. Ew. Um, but you know, good for you, girl. Good for you. She seemed like they'd be getting into some things over there on Love Island. Um, what else is going on? She said that she go to sleep because she be tired because she work a lot. And I was like, that's true. So I'm like, did he old ass be putting your young ass to sleep? That's hilarious. Um, he says they're dating. And she was like, you know, we together, but we dating. But we together, you know. So she would just let him know that they're together. Um, and he says he likes how real and how fun she is. Neither one of them want to get married. That's not on the plate for neither one of them. She want to just be able to go whenever she want to be able to go. Um, and the same thing for him. And she said she does want twins and they run in his family. So Carisha might let Diddy shoot her club up and then they going to break up. And then she going to be a resident girlfriend, you know, BM like Kim was. And if that's what she want to do, then great for her because the music industry don't really pay that well anymore. And Diddy is the old dick billionaire. So if that's what you want to do, girl, then congratulations. Have a good life. What do you think, ladies? I think it was dope for him to give her her own show right out the gate. Different type of sugar daddy there. He um, gave her a show? Huh? He gave her a show? Yeah. It's, it's on, on Revolt. Revolt. Yeah. That's, That's his stuff? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Girl, yeah. Hey. And mm. it's, it's, um, it's the fact that she's saying we together. I'm like, but he actually said y'all are friends. Okay. So I just want her to like, yeah, y'all dating, but y'all are friends. Okay. So I just want to make sure she has her fun as much as you want to, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, some part of me feel like he ain't the only dude she got. I feel like she got a good hood dude down there in Miami somewhere and not just Diddy. 52 is not old, but it's old for 20 something year old Carisha. Diddy dating somebody young ain't nothing new. Diddy always dating young girls and not marrying them and 
getting them knocked up or giving them money. It ain't nothing new. It's, 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 she just got a show out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why she's getting mad at Cassie 2.0 for overstepping. Well, not even her, you know, but <laughs> said, I, ain't all, I ain't coming up off him. I ain't coming up off him. I'm like, bitch, I ain't mad neither. I like that type of language. But you know, but it's then, not- he said, then he said, I'm single and dating. So I'm like, you know, it's, that's what Diddy do. I think it's boring. Even, you know, him, him breaking up the old down. girl. Even Diddy bringing up, you know, what well, Carisha brought up old girl who was fussing about or whatever. He's like, I had to smooth out. I'm like, it's just, Diddy do what he want. So I'm like, okay, next. Carisha is actually entertaining. That's why he could give her a show and it could work. Cassie ain't had no personality and barely had any talent. That's no disrespect. She was just very beautiful. Um, but just you can't, me. Stevie J should have showed y'all that you can't make something out of nothing okay um you know it don't matter how much talent you have if it's a jocelyn it's a it's a jocelyn me and you <laughs> think you both making them move i'm gonna I'm a always remember that song cassie at least you got one song. out of him i always yeah. remember the video too where she uh i'll think about the video of the mirror wow yes you, you. Did y'all hear how that story about her cutting her hair off was he told her to cut her hair off at 106 in Park and she did it on the spot? What? Oh, the hair. Yeah, I remember that. I think Jock was talking about that. It's giving me me in the trash. It's going down thirsty. Wow. Sad. Sad. Anything else to say about Carisha and them, y'all? Mm-mm, I thought it was cute. I ain't finished. I tell you one thing, Cassie. Cute. Cassie got a song with Nikki before the Oh, a city girl to sit in. But anyway, go ahead. But guess what though? Guess what? Cassie needed a song with them. Well, with Nikki, city don't city girls don't need a song with Nikki. I'm sorry. I've already they want played. one though. They do, and they should have one because it would be dope. But they don't need one. They don't. <laughs> they should though. They. Should. I feel like I would love all of the girls to come together and do like a you know a ladies first. You know, not a ladies first. Lady, uh, Mar- Mar- ladies Mar- night. <laughs> ladies night. No, not Lady Marmalade. Ladies night. I oh, would love night. for them to come together and do a, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, get Missy and that bitch to produce it. Excuse me. But yeah. Nikki can't be on there if, if Missy do it. Missy has never done a song with Nikki. I don't know if she ever will. You know why? Probably because Nikki mean. Y'all be acting like that girl not mean, but that girl mean to people. Nikki, I'm going to tell you what probably happened. She probably was mean to some like regular degular schmegular person that that Missy know and love. And Missy was like, oh, Lil no, Kim. I can't fuck with her. That's who look Missy loves Lil Kim. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You're right. I forgot about all those years of working together and doing shit together. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, it was the nineties was a great time because we're never gonna get no no camaraderie like that again out of you bitches. I guess. Oh Lord, Lord. Lord. So I'm sorry, y'all. Juvie is in here biting shit, but let's go ahead. Um, Hi, Juvie. I'm gonna show him to y'all in a minute, but let's go ahead and get into the uh the wait 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 did I not load? You know what? Let's start here. I don't know why it has sound, y'all. I didn't mean for it to have sound. It didn't have sound when I originally did it, but y'all see Omarion flexing. This the lame part. Watch. That's the lame part. He said, "That's the lame part." Yeah. He was definitely looking like his height, the way he was acting. Yes. So that's why. Yes. So that's why I was like seeing this unbothered. The power of choosing joy. Book. It's just kind of like really, Kevin Samuels. Really, I'm going to give you the less toxic version of Kevin Samuels in a rap rhetoric. Like, I'm going to make you feel good about worshiping black men. I'm not going to make you feel bad about it. I'm going to make you feel real good about worshiping black men. You're going to love it. It's like the way it's supposed to be. So, yeah, I, I'm looking at Omarion like, nigga, you really fucked over us with this one. Like, you really made us feel like we were safe with you. And we not. Go ahead, Nisi. You muted. Uh, I said, I want to know what's in the book. Y'all want to know what's in it? Nope. I'm curious. I am. I want to know please. if he's going to talk about how Meditations. you become unbothered with your baby mama getting with your ex-bandmate. Like, that's all I want to know. What did he do to be unbothered? And what does it feel like for her to be, like, popular because of Tay Diggs? Like, a nigga older than you. Like, what does that feel like? Like, that's I'm insane. Bothered. I think he was quiet. Less than I'm, I think not saying nothing is easy. 
I want to know, like, what happened behind closed doors? So I'm like, but I also don't care about the book either. But I'm like, he was more, he just didn't say nothing. And so that was his unbothered way. But I mean, I'm not going to get the book. Be 2 k all day. I think it's going to be about chakras and meditations and just being mindful. I think that's what the book is going to be about, honestly. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be like, meditations. wake up every morning at five. Don't miss the sunrise. Right. It better be. Because the way he was defending Kevin Samuels online, I don't know how the fuck to feel about Omarion right now. So you better, you better tread real lightly around this bitch. Or that next album may not do nothing. I'm sorry. Um, I got offended. I got offended when he went to bat so hard. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, you know, Marianne, please do what you did with your baby mama. Don't say nothing. Hmm. Anyway, moving along. Yo, another one? Another one? I ain't really want to talk about this shit. I ain't want to talk about this shit. But Monique made me mad. So here we are. So. I was I was not giving a fuck about this after I initially talked about it, which we understand that Monique and DL had some type of issue with the promoter. The promoter lied to both people, but essentially Monique backed it up and said her real reason for being upset with DL Hughley was because on his radio station, some other people asked her husband a question that questioned his sexuality, basically. And she got upset about it. It never aired because she called him bitch to fit, so it never aired. But somehow, that is her reasoning after an hour-long live that Jay Lee spent three hours and 45 minutes on, okay? After that... Now, how I get you know, what I do? What I get Well, no, that's the only way that I knew it happened. No, it's a joke. No, it's a joke. No, it's a joke. If y'all haven't seen her live, y'all should go watch it. But that's the only reason I know what happened is because you was on live talking about it. Because otherwise, I would have been like, girl, I don't care. But you was on there. So I was like, let me go see what Jay Lee said. Um... But yeah, I was over Monique and DL after a, the initial posting of the contract. I was over it at that point. I felt like I don't need to hear anymore. This is some, you know, this is some amongst y'all bullshit that I think is messy, but I don't care. But then she brought his daughter's sexual assault up. And that's when I got upset. So apparently she used his daughter's situation to reference how he did not protect his daughter from a grown man and dl got on his radio station and said he was not a grown man they were the same age and he has talked about how he felt like shit and will forever be apologetic for the fact that he did not you know he didn't believe her when she initially told him so i want to say this Monique, you ain't shit because that didn't have nothing to do with what we was talking about. And you made that that woman have to relive trauma that she shouldn't have shouldn't have had to relive over this bullshit. At the end of the day, if you don't want people to question your husband's sexuality, then stop giving him five percent of your fucking money and make him make his money another way than off your back. If you don't want people to keep questioning him, let's start there, daddy. OK, the fuck out of here with that toxic ass shit. Um, outside of that, that lady gave a real classy, like, clap back to you. And I appreciated her for doing that because you needed to be clapped back and told how terrible you were for bringing that shit up when it didn't have nothing to do with what we was talking about. We was all cool when you was on stage ragtagging on DL because we know who DL is. DL ain't shit. Like he said, he didn't believe his own daughter when she told him something happened. So... I'm going to go back to what I said initially. Monique may not necessarily always be right, but she don't always be lying either. So I still feel like DL ain't shit, but essentially, Monique, you have now moved yourself lower than him. And I don't even know how that happened. You did it to yourself. You should have just sat over there and ate your fucking food after you posted the contracts. But you felt the need to dig deeper and deeper. And I'm, I'm disappointed and I really don't feel the love. I don't feel the love that you have for all of us at this moment. Not at all. What y'all got to say, ladies? I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. This is prime example of what I mean when I say mama to the mouth when people don't know when to stop and they just keep going. And ultimately it end up making them look worse than what they think they make the other person look. When are people going to stop um, shooting themselves in the damn foot? I don't get it. The never ending saga. 
I think Monique was just, <clears throat> I think she was just wrong and out of line because she kept moving the meter for me. Um, at first, when she first did it on the stage, I'm like, all right, cool, they do the shit on the stage, everybody talk about everybody, what it is. But then when you give your reasoning as to why you went in on him and it went from this to that to this to that, it's like you keep moving the goalposts to make excuses for you coming at this man and attacking this man like this. It's just, <clears throat> it's not helping you. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just felt like she was wrong. I feel like she should listen to 50 Cent when he said uh, the best revenge in so many words is your paper. So get in your bag and work on the stuff that you got, you know, working on. You've been out of the, uh, I ain't gonna say been out of the industry, but you haven't been acting in anything for some time now. So you know, come back, do your thing, and move on. You know, I don't, I don't under, I, I don't understand the point. Didn't want to go on this man's platform after you drug this man and his daughter. Didn't talk about how you want to come on his platform to have a conversation. I said, oh girl, that's dead. Cause all you're gonna do is get on his platform and argue with him there, and then it's gonna be even more of an issue. We're gonna be seeing a whole nother video as to why you felt like you was done wrong when you went up there. Like, whew. I hope this is the end of it though. <laughs> Right. I feel like once DL went on his show and explained everything in detail, and I want to make you know, this is a little thing. he he when he explained it, he said he did. It was like he did not believe her. He made the comment as if, "Oh, that's what kids do." He kind of the way he took what she was saying wasn't how she felt happened to her. And I like that he said, you know, that they were able to talk it through or whatever, and she has forgiven him. And I think Monique now knows her and daddy's son can't come back from that. I feel like Monique tried to say a whole bunch of shit to get people confused. Because, you know, most folks don't dig deep in the shit. And she knew if she said, okay, he attacks black women, he didn't believe his daughter. She said things to make him look like a monster. To get folks on her side for a personal issue. And that's what I hate about it. Because you should not use anybody else's trauma. Or try to use, you know, different groups of people to get at him for no like it was it was stupid for your own personal reasons from stuff that happened back in the day so i think it's the reason monique ain't said shit since he put his video out because i think that was checkmate because i'm i'm whatever you said about me wasn't even true you put a grown man in my child's room and that ain't what happened you then put out her trauma more than what it already was and you know monique and daddy's son you know they're just on bullshit huh agreed so let's go ahead um and hit the like button one more time um before we get out of here we have one more topic and then we're gonna go ahead and go we're gonna go ahead and go so go ahead and like the video Sorry, y'all. I didn't know it was gonna loop. Sorry. And I didn't know it does that either. It did that automatically. Yeah, because I had said it from when I was playing that Omarion video. Mm. But I was popping in this bitch. All right, it's 1300 of y'all plus in this bitch. And we appreciate you for sticking with us. We know the show is going on a little long. I'm so sorry. I actually had a whole nother topic, but we're not gonna do that. Julie, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah my new dog he's adorable he's ripping the tags off shit he's a baller i'm gonna bring him over here soon but let's go ahead and get into the last topic y'all so the last topic for the show Lori harvey da, da, da. and michael b jordan broke up it's over you guys at least for the moment i think it's over for good either way um i i guess i was out of sync so i didn't realize the internet was having such a crass uh <laughs> you know right uh, um, reaction to this shit because 
y'all don't have any real information whatsoever about these people's breakup, but because a, a fucking source said some shit to People Magazine, everybody feels like Lori Harvey is some evil bitch that yes. turned down this perfect man who was getting ready to give her marriage and a big old house, and she just turned it all down, and that's why he'll go back to white women and will be happy for it. So that's, that's what I've heard. I even saw one one woman say that he dodged a bullet and I was like we know absolutely nothing about Lori Harvey how did we get to that point yeah he in here son we know nothing about Lori Harvey oh, excuse me excuse me sir sir please stop um we know nothing about Lori Harvey y'all like Lori Harvey ain't even on social media in no way for you to even know her fucking personality people just and, heard her voice a couple months ago you know what I'm saying and they really like up here, like, I think he dodged a bullet. And I was just like, but you don't even know her. What I did find interesting, though, was whenever the source came to people, they made sure to say that this was Lori's first real relationship <laughs> because they know um, that the public perception is that she stayed in a relationship. Um, so I thought that was funny. But I do think people are so weird the way that they are making it. Lori's fault. We don't know what happened. I just wish that they would have came out with a joint statement. Very much was given contract vibes that y'all had a source go and speak to the magazine when y'all have made y'all's relationship so public to us. Um, but then again, you know, whenever Keith and Ryan Destiny broke up and they put out a statement, I thought it was weird as hell because they weren't married. But now I see why they did it because I kind of wish that Lori and Michael had done it themselves. Um, yeah, we are not in their relationship to know what the hell is uh really going on or what really went on. Um, I feel like I have a few things to say. Um, I'm starting to believe that it could have possibly been a PR, you know, type of relationship for reasons Nisi mentioned in this video that I saw on um, I think it's reality gossip something. It's RGG, it's a really dope site, and they kind of like talked about it because somebody um, this person that was in the industry kind of wrote a book about PR relationships and stuff like that and how you can identify when somebody's in one. But um, I'm starting to definitely question that. I wonder if this was a PR relationship, even though they look so good together. Right. Um, what they say? I want to know. Huh? I said, how can you identify what they say? Um, I want to know. I'll send you the video because she gave a list of things like um, she said something like one of the things that stuck out to me was like when you have a person that you know has dated other people but they've never gone to uh, to do an inter like they've never done an interview about their relationships then all of a sudden they they start being like very they go from being a very private person to being super public all you see on their page is them and that person and then when you see them in interviews they have to talk about you know this relationship mm. she gave a list of things though i'll send you the video it's pretty interesting um but yeah i it, it, if it was indeed a real relationship and they broke up like i mean it is what it is if she ain't ready for marriage that's the thing a lot of people assume that that's what women want and that's not what all women want all women don't want to be married and she's a young woman she wants to live her life i think they probably were 10 years apart i don't know the age difference but you know maybe as much as we think that michael is this amazing man from what we see on tv and the photos and all of we don't know this man for real so he may appear to be amazing to us but may not be as amazing to her based on the standards that she got so i mean it is what it is i don't fault neither one of them hell they experienced it you know they went through it and um it's not working out right now and that's the thing just because it's not working out now don't mean it can't work out later and good point in the comments. I forgot Lori was engaged before this. She was engaged, yep. But and they she were was engaged, engaged for young. like a year. Yeah, they were like, she was like 19, 20 when they got engaged. I think she was 18. Was it 18? Yeah, but she had been dating him since before she was 18. Because that's when I first started following her. I first heard of her. And I remember it was a soccer player. Yeah, he was. And it did not, it didn't, they didn't, I don't know. Because when I read an article, they said they were only together for like two years. So Ooh, the I'm not yeah, the soccer player. So the relationship so they were together since she was seven, sixteen or seventeen. Mm -hmm. Or or eighteen. Eighteen, nineteen, probably. probably. Yeah. Maybe. 
Burgess for the super chat. She said, uh, with Steve and Lady Heron when subbing each other or Michael. Ah, that's funny. She called that lady, <laughs> lady heroin. I felt like Steve was subbing his wife with that comment he made. Uh, she dated a Memphis to pay the famous uh, Correct. soccer in Europe for a few years. And shortly after they got engaged, she broke up with him. She was only 18. Okay. I don't know. Mama Mama Harvey may be advising her like, girl, that, that's not it, girl. No, that, not that one either. I feel like it's weird when people break up and then people want to instantly like put a reason on it. I'm like, do it matter? I feel like I know when Chadwick Boseman passed away, I think I remember Michael doing an uh, interview saying how he wanted to live his life differently and not be so closed off because of how hard it was for him losing Chadwick, which I thought was commendable. But I also feel like if they broke up and we don't really know her, we don't know him, I'm like, is this weird how people want to place blame on one or the other of them? Like, some want to blame her, some want to blame him. I'm like, like... I think like it does it that does it they weren't married it was only like a, a like a year like I didn't even think it was news really I mean yeah it's news oh they broke up fine but I was like oh the tweet I'm like y'all are just this it was hella weird was though that in the statement they kept saying there the just the statement to me was weird like y'all should have just came out and both said we love each other but we're gonna part ways with for the source to be saying they're both so broken hearted like how the fuck is the both of y'all broken hearted and y'all could just get back together like what i don't believe sources i think so. when people say sources i'm looking like unless you can say their rep or they said like a source can a source can really be anybody so that's how, that's how i was like when right, it came out right. and there were sources saying stuff Thank i'm you. like we can't put no real weight into what they said because we don't even know who it is. Like, is it someone in her camp, his camp, or whatever? But I was like, you know, let them let them, let them move on. And, you know, she wasn't ready, or if he wasn't ready, or whatever it may have been. It's just weird how people wanted to blame her and or him. Even mm -hmm. her, I'm like, it was stupid to me to even do any of that. Like, right. she don't have to want to get married. And if he wants married and she doesn't, they should break up because they both want different things. But I'm right. like, people be so picky, so picky. I put that in the chat for you, Nisi. The real, uh, oh, in our group chat. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, for me, I'm I'm gonna say um, that I feel like essentially, um, there are men that are mad at Lori. There are women that are mad at Lori. There are people that are rooting for Lori. You know what I'm saying? Hot girl summer. She's undefeated. You know, she's baby or female future, you know, whatever you want to call it. I personally feel like, like y'all said, we don't know them people. We don't know them people. We don't know what's going on. But ultimately, I feel like, I think we all knew this relationship was going to end at some point. I don't think we right. thought this was going to end in marriage. Like, get the fuck out of here. So I wasn't surprised at all. I was like, oh, well, that's over now. Um, but this is what I want everybody to understand. Every relationship comes to an end at one point or another for one reason or another. All relationships come to an end for one reason or another at one point or another. So please, please, please just let people experience their relationships. And if it's over when it's over, we had a good time, we moving on. It doesn't mean that Lori is some terrible person that doesn't appreciate a good man. And it doesn't mean that Michael B. Jordan is some control freak that wanted some young girl that was an arm piece to tie down to himself so he can make the world think he like black women so he can secure his career for the rest of his life like Denzel and Will Smith have done. You know, now that y'all are back Bashing Jada after Will is done using her as his connection to the black community while probably cheating on her with white women. It's all alleged, but it's how I feel. Um, essentially, I hope that everybody walks away from the relationship a better person. Um, do y'all have anything else to add to Lori? Very quickly, um, I'm upset that I did not get a chance for us to um, discuss Nick Cannon um, and all of the, the various baby, I made a cute little graphic. I'm so <laughs> upset, but we've run out of time. So maybe next week I can add another baby and there'll be another woman to I was about to say, it probably will be. <laughs> right. I'll put the graphic in the OneDrive. And, and we'll make sure to come back because we'll know there'll be another woman in this cult that he's in. And we told y'all it was a cult when we interviewed, help, 
help. Cree. 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 Yeah. Cree. Cree from growing up hip hop. She told us, she gave us the tea that it's a fucking cult over there with Nick. So when Abby De La Rosa, whatever the bitch, the, you know, name that got another baby for him that already had a baby for him, that had twins, yeah, now twins. she got another baby on the way. Her. Yeah. When she get up there and tell y'all it's not about the money, she meant that shit. What is it about? Well, we'll talk about well, we'll talk about it at another time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The school ladies' first panel, and we'll get into you know we'll get into that later. But um, yeah, follow us all at Ooh Ladies First. That is two O's. Ooh Ladies First on Twitter and Instagram at Vondi Blue at Jay Lee's Corner at Jamie. That's me at Nisi Dixon. Everywhere. Make sure y'all like the video on the way out. Um, <laughs> hold up, y'all. Hold up, hold up. Cause look, look, Juvie and I appreciate you. Hey, hey, hey Juvie. Juvie. He's so good. Hi. Yeah. We appreciate you guys for coming through. Do we have Juvie. anything else? Juvie, take over. Listen, Juvie, take it. <laughs> Make sure y'all follow all of the ladies, yeah. and um, we'll see y'all next time. So, uh, peace out, y'all.